How has collective wisdom affected uh, the development and all the rules sort of that we place around money? The collective wisdom obviously changes no matter where, where uh, you are in society. So for example, in um, the 19th century in British Columbia in the Pacific Northwest, Native Americans, they had a ceremony called the potlatch. What they do, they would one tribe would invite all of the, the sister tribes, and they all come and they have a big ceremony. And then they would start to give out lavish gifts on everyone. They would line up all the gifts and start giving them out to everyone. And what were they doing? They were shaming the other tribes, saying, look at how much wealth we have. Oh. We're going to embarrass you with our riches. You're never going to be able to repay this. So a gift, collective wisdom in this case, a gift wasn't just something, a nice gesture. A gift was a way to control the other person. Mm. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll never be able to repay this. So that is one example of how like, the collective wisdom within this particular Native com American community was basically a way to obligate you to future, to future interactions. That's not too different than even today. Look at Kickstarter. When you get that email from a friend, Kickstarter, yeah. and it's like, hey, I'm a musician, I'm a documentary maker, will you send $20 to my Kickstarter campaign? Well, you could say no, right, and suffer the consequences with your friendship. But if you, if you put the $20 in, now what happens is you've now reversed it, that that person's not obligated to keep you informed of, of you know, the money, you prolong that. See, next time you go to a Starbucks, and, they, and the, one of the baristas gives you a cup of coffee and you don't have to pay for it, you'll feel a little bit obligated to go back there yeah. and continue your business with them. Yeah. But the, the way money works is once I give you the money, this relationship is over mm -hmm. and I'll see you later. So money has basically, money has basically um, created a more anonymous um, marketplace mm. where it's just valued on dollars and cents. It's not as, you're not as reliant on, your, on relationships or your family. That's a good thing, that can be a negative thing. Mm -hmm really brings out the independence in individuals, yeah. but maybe also severs you a little bit from some of your relationships. Yeah, it can be very burdening. In Montreal, every um, year, they have something called Moving Day, where everyone moves. It just goes back to the 60s, where like everyone moves, is, and huh. they even have um, TV commercials about Moving Day. And you're supposed to call your friends and family, and they're supposed to help you move. What happens? Sometimes your friends don't show up, they flake on you, your family like is busy, and so people feel incredibly <laughs> obligated and like they get sort of depressed that their friends are like not, are flaking on them. So when you have money, you can just pay a, a moving company, mm -hmm. right? So there's people try to escape the family relationships using money to the marketplace. Everyone talks about the corrosive nature of the marketplace, but there's also a good thing to it. You yeah. can be anonymous and carry out your business.